Hello, it's Oscar from Skinny Fat Transformation here, and today I'll talk about transforming the skinny fat body type. To be specific, I'll teach you how to lose fat and gain muscle mass at the same time while training from home for a few hours per week, mainly with bodyweight exercises. And I'll also teach you how to naturally raise your testosterone production. And this is very important because most skinny fat guys have a naturally low testosterone production. And this is what I've seen in the lab tests that I've done in hundreds of clients. And testosterone is the main muscle building hormone in the body. Therefore, when you have low levels, it's very hard to recover between training sessions and to peg on any type of muscle mass, especially around the upper body. Generally speaking, skinny fat guys find it very difficult to gain muscle mass. And I know this because throughout the last eight years, I've gotten thousands of applications for my online coaching program. And while reading through these, I've noticed that many of these guys have trained for years, especially with heavy compound exercises and bodybuilding splits. I can identify with this because in the first two years of training, I gained a lot of strength, but I gained no muscle mass. And the reason for this, I believe, is because most of the programs you find online are simply not designed for our body type. So back when I was skinny fat, I used to look at all these transformations online and I thought I was doing something wrong because I could see guys transforming in six months, a year or two years and making massive transformations. I, d I just didn't know what I was doing wrong. I, ch I thought maybe I'm not e eating enough protein, so I tried eating more protein, but it didn't work for me. I thought maybe I'm not uh, doing the lifts with proper technique, so I, I tried to really optimize my technique. But that also didn't work for me. In the end, I, was, I became really frustrated because I saw my results are not like my peers. I actually trained with a guy that did the exact same program as me, three times per week, lifting heavy on the squat, bench press, and deadlift. And he was gaining muscle mass each month and progressing in strength. But I struggled to add any strength. I actually ended up becoming stronger than him, but it took me much longer. And I was stalling constantly. And I had to be very consistent and work hard for any strength gains I made. But then after making all these strength gains, I still gain, gained no muscle mass. I could deadlift like 400 pounds and squat 300 pounds as to grass, bench press 220, but I, I didn't even look like I trained. So I made all these gains in my training, but I didn't see any results. That's when I realized that most of these trainers online, they have never been skinny fat themselves. They are naturally lean guys that just have to eat a lot to gain weight and muscle mass. Or they're just guys that have always been in shape, like natural athletes, uh, people who used to be athletic in high school and college who start training and then gain muscle mass. That's very different from a skinny fat guy who has never been lean, who has never gained muscle mass, who has never been athletic. And if that's you, then this video is really going to help you out. So despite my shortcomings, I managed to transform my physique. And on the left side, you can see me at my worst. I was actually one year into training when I had just finished a bulk to try and gain some muscle. I lifted heavy on the squat, bench press and deadlift, but I didn't really respond to them. I gained a lot of strength, but I just didn't gain muscle. And on the right side, you can see me when I finally got in really good shape. I built up some much better proportions and I achieved my goals in training. I, I just wanted to build up a more masculine physique and, and that's what I got. So after training for around two years and not getting any results, I was very frustrated and pretty much about to give up on training. I just didn't see the point in putting in all this effort to go to the gym and do these heavy lifts and then uh, get no results out of it. So I went to a doctor to find out why I'm not getting any results. I, I thought perhaps there's something wrong with my body. So the doctor referred me to an endocrinologist, which is a specialist in hormones. And the endocrinologist, she ran a bunch of tests on me. I think it was over 100 tests that I did, um, basically hormones, vitamins, minerals, and a lot more. And she found that I had a low testosterone production. My testosterone levels were around 300 NGDL, which is the same as an old man. So it means I was in the bottom of the, of the natural range. And it means that I would struggle with putting on muscle mass because testosterone is the male hormone of vitality. It's responsible for all the functions in your body. It's responsible for your reproductive functions, your sex drive, your erections, your muscle mass, bone mass, strength gains, brain function. So it's a very important hormone that controls everything. And when you have low levels, you will feel terrible. You will feel a low sex drive, low energy le levels, low motivation, and you will find it very hard to put on muscle mass. And I found out that most of my clients, that they also had low testosterone levels just like me. So being skinny fat and having low testosterone, they go hand in hand because the symptoms are quite similar. If you have low testosterone levels during puberty, you will most likely end up with a naturally skinny fat physique and you will find it hard to, to get out of that look during your lifetime because your body just wants to stay that way after having low testosterone levels during puberty. So if you're skinny fat, I highly recommend that you check your testosterone levels because they are more than likely low. 
I asked my endocrinologist, what can I do about this? Because you scanned my entire body and checked everything and you can't find a root cause of my low testosterone level. So should I just suffer with this or is there any kind of treatment? And after looking online, I saw that the main treatment for, for low testosterone levels is testosterone replacement therapy, where you basically inject testosterone to produce healthy levels of testosterone. And I asked her, can I get testosterone replacement therapy? And she told me that you can get testosterone replacement therapy because in Denmark, we are not allowed to give it to young patients your age because it's not normal to have low testosterone at your age. So I told her like, I am this age and I'm just like 19 years old and I have low testosterone levels. Should I suffer with this my whole life? Is there no treatment for me? She said, unfortunately, it's impossible for her to prescribe it. And I ended up seeing three or four other endocrinologists and they all pretty much sh shouted me out of the office and thought I, I just want testosterone injections for increasing my muscle mass. And that is actually true. I wanted to increase my muscle mass, but it's not like I went in to get steroids because I felt, felt like shit during that time. I could barely get an erection and I was 19 years old and I found it very hard to get through my daily tasks because I was so fatigued every single day. I, I was depressed and I was also diagnosed with ADD, which most likely was a result of having low testosterone levels. I simply couldn't focus and I struggled getting through my studies. Despite that, I started doing my own research and I was reading all day long about the endocrine system and testosterone and estrogen and all these hormones in our body. And I found that while testosterone replacement therapy, it works really well, it has a lot of side effects. For example, by taking testosterone replacement therapy, you have a high risk of developing high blood pressure and getting blood clots. And since my family has a history of cardiovascular disease, I really wanted to avoid these problems. Therefore, I started to look into natural solutions. And that's how I, I started my journey to optimize my testosterone naturally. The two keys are diet and sleep and stress management as well. But diet and sleep are by far the most important. So to raise testosterone levels naturally, what you have to do is you basically have to allow your body to produce it. And the way you allow your body to produce it is by living a healthy, balanced lifestyle. That means eating a diet that has sufficient level of anti-inflammatory fats and saturated fats. And you need the right balance between these and also having enough carbs and protein. And the thing that is overrated in, um, in fitness is mostly protein. Uh, almost every fitness trainer is going to tell you to eat a high protein diet. The problem with a high protein diet is that when you eat a lot of protein, you have less room for carbs and fats. So the thing that ends up getting uh, restricted is mostly fats, but for some people also carbs. The problem with that is that fats and carbs are more important for produce, for producing testosterone levels. So. The best kind of diet for increasing your testosterone is a diet that has just enough protein, but which is higher in fats and carbs. This way you can produce the most testosterone because fats and carbs are the protein sparing nutrients. They give you energy and they allow your body to produce hormones. Protein does not really affect your hormonal production that much. So having a high protein diet is not ideal for someone with low testosterone levels. And also skinny fat guys, we tend to have a quite bad digestive system. Many of my clients tend to be constipated and have problems with their digestion. So when they eat a high protein diet, what happens is that they end up being constipated and tired all the time. So going high protein is definitely not the right way for skinny fat, but going low protein is also not correct. It's, it's about hitting that, that sweet spot, about hitting that balance, you know. So it's different for each person how much they need and it requires some experimentation. But for me personally, I like to stay around 150 grams of protein. And then I have around 30% of my calories from fat and the rest is from carbs. And all the foods I eat are organic as much as possible and healthy. And I know that's expensive and a lot of people cannot afford it. So it's not like you have to do that because back when I was a student and I raised my testosterone, I did not eat organic foods all the time and I was on a limited budget. So it's possible to increase your testosterone without eating the perfect diet. It's about making improvements to your existing diet. And the other thing is, about sleep you want to get high quality sleep because when you sleep you, you produce most of your hormones so sleep might actually be even more important than diet everyone in the fitness industry is focused so much on diet but sleep might actually be more important because there's so many studies out there showing that people that sleep properly that means between seven to nine hours of high quality sleep each night they gain a higher ratio of muscle to fat when they bulk up on a fitness program 
And they are also much more consistent with a fat loss diet and achieve longer term fat loss. So sleeping is extremely important for your fitness goals. Therefore, you should make it a high priority to sleep well. And some of the common problems I've seen in, in, in my clients are insomnia and sleep apnea, which are quite hard to fix. But the key is that you have to work hard on fixing it, even if that means going to a sleep doctor and, and getting it corrected. Because if you don't sleep well, your testosterone levels are not going to be anywhere near what they should be. After I started implementing all these things that I found about natural testosterone optimization, I saw an in initial increase of roughly 100% in my natural testosterone production. And within three to six months, I saw that my energy levels got much higher. I had a higher sex drive and much faster recovery between training sessions. That's when I really started to be able to peg on muscle mass. And over the long term, I increased my testosterone levels with over 250%. That obviously didn't happen overnight. It took years, but the main point is that my testosterone levels kept increasing year after year until they reached the top end of the range. I believe from what I've seen online that my natural testosterone increase is one of the highest out there. I've seen one or two other people that might have a higher increase, but I didn't see their lab test to confirm it, so I'm not sure whether those are legitimate, but it, my increase is definitely one of the highest that you can find online. The next step after fixing your diet and sleep is to focus on training. With training, a lot of skinny fat guys make the mistake to focus a lot on heavy bubble lifts and doing a lot of running and high impact cardio. And the problem with these things is that when you live very heavy on bubble exercises and you do a lot of running and other types of high impact cardio, it places a, a big toll on your recovery. And this means that you can train less times each week because your recovery needs are much higher. So you spend most of the week resting between training sessions because you're so fatigued from the hard training that you did. And this is bad because as a skinny fat guy, you need constant stimulus on your muscles, especially the lats, shoulders, arms, and chest, because these are the four key muscle groups that you need to bring up to create that V-taper upper body with big and powerful arms. And if you're skinny fat, you probably notice that when you do heavy barbell programs, your legs and lower body, they tend to blow up. And the reason for this is because when you have naturally high estrogen levels and low testosterone, your hormonal balance is a bit more feminine. It's, it's a bit more like a female. And if you notice, most girls that go to the gym, they tend to put on muscle mass on the glutes and the legs much easier compared to the upper bodies. And the same is the case with skinny fat guys. We tend to gain muscle mass on the lower body much easier than the upper body. Therefore, your training should always emphasize the upper body. Of course, you still want to train your legs. It's very important. And the way you will do this is by doing bodyweight squats to get, get conditioning, mobility, and some mass. But your focus needs to be on the upper body. And for the upper body, I found two key exercises that I show here. It's the chin-up or pull-up and the diamond push-up. I found these two exercises are all you need to begin with because they emphasize all the important muscles. The chin-up is going to target your lats and your biceps. And the diamond push-up is going to target your upper chest, inner chest, and and the arms and the shoulders as well. So you will bring up your entire upper body with just two exercises. And the great thing about these two exercises is that you can do them at home at any time. So they're very easy to train daily and they're easy to recover from because they're bodyweight exercises. So it's very natural movements that don't put too much stress on your lower back compared to the big heavy barbell lifts. So you can recover from them much faster. And this enables you to train pretty much every day and stimulate those target muscles that you need to bring up. And I highly recommend you get into bodyweight training before you do any type of weight training because it just makes sense to master your own body weight before you do weight training. And in my experience, you can make much better gains as a skinny fat guy doing bodyweight stuff. Most skinny fat guys cannot do a single pull up. And for me personally, it took about six months of hard training to do a single pull up. I'm very tall with lanky arms and very under muscle arms so it was very hard for me to do body weight exercises but it was a big mistake for me to not focus on them because they gave me the, the best results ever and when you train with body weight you want to leave your ego before training and just do the variations of each exercise that you can do for example with pull-ups you can just start with hanging on the bar until you feel comfortable with that i usually have my clients build up to about a one minute hang and then after you can hang on the bar for one minute, you can start to do other exercises such as this one that I show here, which is called the inverted row, where you row your body weight. And then you can also do negative pull-ups. 
the thing I recommend you stay away from is machines such as the lead pull down or the assisted pull up machine because these machines they don't transfer too well to bodyweight exercises. In my experience, at least, when you do these machines, it takes much longer to get the real reps on bodyweight exercises. So if you focus on inverted rows and hanging on the pull-up bar and doing negative pull-ups, you will get a pull-up much faster compared to if you do lat pull-downs and assisted pull-ups. And I've, I've done this experiment over and over again with many people and um, it, it's much faster to just focus on the real deal, which is bodyweight exercises. Don't worry about other people looking badly at you when you practice uh, easier variations of bodyweight exercise because we all start somewhere. And if you feel shy about doing, let's say, wall push-ups or just hanging on the bar, then just train at home to begin with. And then when you feel more confident, you can move to a gym setting. The goals I recommend you build towards are 15 chin-ups, 30 diamond push-ups and 100 bodyweight squats all the way down. And, and these are done all in one set without any break. So you just keep going. And I've seen in my clients, it usually takes around three to six months for most people to achieve these goals by training around five or six times per week. But there are some people that start out with a worse starting point and especially taller guys will find it harder to progress in bodyweight exercises. So if you are over six feet tall, which is around 180 centimeters, and you have very long arms, then you might find it very difficult to progress in bodyweight exercises. Therefore, it might take you a bit longer to reach those numbers. Therefore, don't really obsess about hitting them within a certain time frame. Just work towards hitting them and you will be all good. For the physique, I recommend that you hit a flat waist with an ab outline. The reason to why I don't want you to go all the way down to a six pack is because most skinny fat guys, they see a disruption in hormonal production when they go too low in body fat. So what I've seen in my clients is that all the skinny fat guys that try to get six pack abs, they tend to get a low testosterone production and problems with, uh, with the symptoms of low testosterone once they go too low in body fat. Therefore, it's better to maintain a slightly higher body fat and to focus on gaining muscle mass in the right places to build up your proportions and, and look good. So don't worry so much about getting a six pack. And once you reach those goals, you can start to work on weighted pull-ups, weighted dips, and maybe some weighted exercises for the, for the upper body. I'm not against weight training at all. I just believe that every skinny fat guy needs to start with body weight and build up gradually. And once you master your own body weight, you can add some weighted exercises, especially weighted pull-ups, and also add some weight training as well. One question I get very often is about the intensity that you should train at. And I'm, I'm uh, all for training at a high intensity, so I believe that you should train to positive muscular failure. And that means that when you feel like you can't do another rep with good technique, that is when you stop the set. And if you're not sure whether you can do another good rep, then you can also stop the set because it's, it's better to be safe than sorry. Problem is when you go beyond failure and you, and you fail at doing a rep with good technique, then it uh, puts a very big toll on your recovery. So you, you might not be fresh for the training station the next day. Therefore, it's more strategic to just keep one rep in reserve and always make sure that you never train to the point where you fail on, the, on your set. Finally, something that's often neglected in training is the negative phase of each rep. So what I've seen in most of my clients in the exercise videos is that they start out training by doing very fast reps. So they basically use a lot of momentum and swinging for each rep and they completely neglect the negative phase of the rep. So for example, on pull-ups, the negative phase is the part where you lower yourself and the same goes for push-ups and uh, squats. So the reason to why the negative phase is important is because so many studies have shown that roughly 66% of the muscle growth that you get out of training happens during the negative phase. And this is a big distinction between bodybuilders and strength athletes because if you train for strength, you don't really want to emphasize the negative phase too much, but rather you want to be explosive and do the reps fast. But when you train for hypertrophy and muscle mass, you want to emphasize the negative phase, so you want to control each rep with your muscles. So when you lower yourself in pull-ups, I like to give my clients the rule that they should take around two seconds on the lowering part to lower themselves slowly and control the, the negative part. So to wrap it up, you want to emphasize the negative phase of each rep. You want to use the target muscles of each exercise on every single rep to control the exercise. And you also want to avoid any kind of bouncing momentum and swinging because these take off the stress from the muscles. So when you combine all these things and you perform each set properly, you will find that each set is much more difficult than you. And you will also get much better muscle gains out of each set while keeping the risk of injury to a minimum. 
I've personally used these strategies to continue gaining muscle mass for over eight years while barely focusing on strength. So my maximum lifts have not really increased. And while I believe that everyone should get stronger in the beginning of their training, I don't believe it's necessary to get that much stronger to, to build muscle mass over the long term. So yeah, of course, take your time to build strength in the beginning, but do it the right way and do it with uh, slow and controlled reps where you use the target muscles. This way you'll get both strength gains and muscle gains. And at some point you'll probably find that you're still in strength, but you will still be able to gain muscle mass by training this way, even if your strength doesn't increase. So don't worry so much about being able to deadlift 500 pounds or anything like that, because those things are not important. I'm not a very strong guy compared to a lot of other people, but I'm much bigger. And that is because I've been training with light to moderate weights and body weight exercises throughout my whole career. And I focused on the quality of each set. After having massive success with bodyweight exercise myself, I created my website, skinnyfattransformation.com. That was about eight years ago. And I started writing about my experience with heavy barbell training and uh, also bodyweight exercises. And at that time, the information I provided was very controversial. I told people like you have to train the whole body every day, do bodyweight exercises. And they told me it's insane, it's overtraining and you can't do that. But there were some people that believed me and I ended up having around 100,000 people coming to my website each month and started to get a big following of skinny fat guys to follow my advice. I had about 30,000 people doing my free bodyweight program at the time. And many of them, they started reporting that for the first time in their life, they started seeing results. And most of these people, they had trained with heavy bubble exercises for years before that and saw no results. But then when they started doing bodyweight exercises, they saw results for the first time in their life. So to wrap up this video, I want to tell you it's very important that you stay patient with your transformation because as a skinny fat guy you have below average genetics and that means that your response to training and dieting is uh, slower than most other people so you probably notice that most of your friends when they train they gain muscle mass and lose fat at a much faster rate than you even if they don't work as hard and that's simply because of genetics genetics play a huge role in in how you can end up looking and how fast you progress so it's very important that you don't compare yourself to other people and just try to beat yourself each workout because when you compare yourself, you will never be happy with your physique. There will always be someone that is leaner and more ripped than you. It's uh, setting yourself up for failure. Therefore, it's very important that you have these realistic expectations and, and know what you can achieve. And to give you some perspective, there are two things that are very important. One of them is bone structure. So most skinny fat guys tend to have a wider bone structure around the, the hips combined with narrow shoulders. And that means that you will never really have that crazy V taper as, as someone that is a natural ectomorph with a tiny waist and tiny hips. And that's simply because your bone structure isn't really designed for looking that way. So when you train and you transform, you have to accept this bone structure and you have to accept that perhaps you won't look like that fitness guy on Instagram who has a perfect body but you will still look much better than more than 90% of people out there. So you have to be happy with your results and accept that it takes a bit longer than most people. For example, with muscle gains, you can gain around one to two pounds of muscle per month in the first year of training. And that is if you train properly and diet properly. And most people will be closer to one pound than two pounds. So with a one pound muscle gain, there's no way you're going to see that because it's going to be spread around your whole body. So you will maybe gain like a little bit around your arms, a bit around your chest, a bit around your shoulders and especially if you have high body fat levels then muscle gain is not going to be visible so you have to track your training performance and see how are your training sessions going if you stay around the same body weight but you improve at the body weight exercises it means you're getting stronger and most likely you're building some muscle mass underneath so it's important you don't obsess too much about body weight and and rapid changes in in weight and physique because it's just not going to happen you have to focus on improving your training performance while eating healthy and following a balanced healthy lifestyle and over time you will see results as long as you improve in your training just trust me on this don't try to rush it and try to gradually improve in your training and the last thing is your genetic body fat set point some people naturally just stay at a higher body fat so the way you can see it is as follows if you just train i mean if you just eat the way you normally do without any kind of diet and you just eat until you're saturated, you will have a certain body fat percentage. And if your entire family is naturally fat, it means this is where your body naturally wants to stay. You can change this by living a healthy lifestyle. You can reduce this greatly. However, if your natural body fat percentage is very high, it's unlikely that you can maintain ripped six-pack abs year-round like some other guys. And that is simply because of your genetic body fat set point. So if, when you try to diet 
way below, below this genetic body fat set point, what's going to happen is that your hormonal production is going to be di disrupted and your metabolism is going to slow down. You will feel terrible. You will feel low sex drive. You will find it hard to get erections and you will find it hard to focus on anything and you will just feel terrible. So dieting too low in body fat is not great. The kind of body fat percentage I recommend for most skinny fat guys is to just have a flat waist with a bit of an app outline or app definition. You don't need to chase apps. Instead, focus on improving your training performance and muscle gains without getting too fat. That's all you have to do. And as long as you gain muscle mass in the right places, you will end up looking really good. You don't have to have ripped six-pack abs to look good. Trust me on this. I hope that you found this video useful and I highly recommend that if you want some more information about transforming the skinny fat physique, you go to my website skinnyfattransformation.com where I have over 100 articles about the skinny fat physique specifically and there's also a free ebook there which you can download for some more information. Also you can follow me on my social media, my Instagram, my Facebook page and the YouTube channel here. I don't post so often on social media but you can still follow me here and uh, if I post it's almost always about the skinny fat physique. Finally, I want you to like this video so it can reach more skinny fat people. So hit the like button, subscribe and do all that stuff and it's going to reach more people and help everyone out. Hi, what's up everybody? My name's Jack. I've been a skinny fat transformation reader and previous client of Oscar since 2018. Before finding out about Oscar, I always had a hard time losing fat and building any strength or noticeable muscle. It's coming up to two years since discovering Oscar and his principles and I've lost 30 pounds and my strengths improved dramatically. I can now do 20 chin-ups and 16 wide grip pull-ups. Two years down the line, I still frequently revisit his site and I'm always bouncing my own ideas off of him. Oscar's actually inspired me to get my personal training license and help people just like he helped me. Had it not been for the help of Oscar, I would have quit a long time ago.